Hey everybody, it's Derek Clemartin from CodeOpinion.com. Focusing on entities in CRUD, Create, Read, Update, Delete, forces your end users to understand workflows or business rules rather than that information residing in your system, meaning it's in your end users' heads and not actually captured in your system. While CRUD can be great in simple scenarios, it can be very difficult to manage when you start trying to capture the complexities of your domain. I'm gonna illustrate how you can focus rather on tasks to get explicit about the intent of users so that you can capture that and have that in your system rather than your end users' heads. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So to illustrate what I'm talking about basic CRUD, the concept's still the same, regardless of whether you're creating an HTTP API or server-side rendering or kind of a native app, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. And the concept is you have a client, let's say it's a browser, that's interacting with your HTTP API or your app service, and it makes a request for some entity. Now, this is driven primarily by this incorrect notion of having HTTP APIs are what most people call RESTful services driven by entities. I actually call these entity services and I have another video on this, but you're basically requesting an entity. So let's say we make a get request, let's get some particular entity out. And basically we return some representation of that. Most times in the examples that I see, it's pretty much exactly the representation you have in your database for the most part. Then the client interacts with that entity in some way, maybe changes it to some degree, and then sends that back to your app service that really just relays that and maps that back to your database. So for the most part, your app service here is really just a proxy between the client and the database. So this is a post from a couple of years ago that I still think is still common in most people's approaches when creating systems and thinking about entities and they're focusing on CRUD. So this question is, I have this simple data model and I'm creating microservices for these tables. What's the best approach for creating microservices? Do I need to create one microservice per table? And the answer is no, obviously, but it, this also goes to even if you had a single service, would you create a, an endpoint or resources for a given entity? Meaning would you have a resource for film where you're gonna do the typical, incorrect in my opinion, uh, restful idea where you're gonna have a post for insert and you're trying to map HTTP methods to CRUD. Well, that's what I'm trying to demystify here is that this can get complex in a hurry, especially adding more and more logic to the client side if you're trying to add business rules or workflows. And if you're not, then you're just creating very simple UIs that are forcing your users to have everything in your head. So let's jump into some code and some demos so I can illustrate this. I wanna say thank you to all the developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. They'll get access to all the source code I'm about to show, as well as a private Discord server where we have discussions and questions and answers. So if you're interested in joining, check the links in the description. So here's the typical example of something that's CRUD and based on entities. So we have the concept of a product and warehouse that has a name, description, price, cost, quantity, whether it's for sale or not, and whether we're offering free shipping. So I'm just gonna refresh this, and I have a breakpoint here where we're getting this particular route to get the product out, that entity. And what we're doing is we're just hitting our database to get exactly that record out. And we're using that data model to populate our view. So as an end user's point of view here, we can just change whatever we want to change. Let's say that the quantity, I'm going to change the quantity from 15 to 20. And when I save that, I have another breakpoint. What we've done is we've taken everything of that entity and we've resent it back to the server so that we can fetch the, uh, the product out itself and then remap all the data that we sent from our client back to the server to update that record. So our end users can just use this form to update whatever properties on that entity that they want. So let's say for example, and this is just an example, that we have a new rule that we're not allowed to have a product for sale, it must be unavailable for sale, if the quantity is zero. So we have a couple options. One is just our end users need to understand this and that if they go and change the quantity to zero, they must also change the for sale to off. So that doesn't sound ideal, so we wanna implement this in the system. This is also relatively trivial, so that we can just go to our code and where we're actually saving that toggle for sale, we can also check 
to see that the quantity on hand is greater than zero. And if they marked it for sale, then it's gonna be true. Otherwise, it's gonna be false. Now, let's say we have another rule that gets implemented because we've had some bad issues in the past, where if the price is zero, then we also wanna immediately not have the product for sale. So again, it's the same type of thing. It's either in the user's head or we need to implement it. So we can implement it and now say, if the product price is greater than zero and the quantity on hand is greater than zero and it's for sale, then yes, it can be for sale. Now, while this example is really trivial, what it turns into is a death by a thousand paper cuts where you're slowly over time adding more and more logic and rules to where we were adding it at. Now, the problem with this as well is that if you have any other places, other applications, the same application that's interacting with this data or trying to change this data, you don't have that business logic there. So you may try to extract it so that you can perform the same logic either on the client or in different spots on the server. And this becomes a little bit uh, hairy or hectic to deal with. But the thing I wanna point out that isn't talked about as much is that because you pull that information out of your user's end user's head, which is good, they don't necessarily know what all the logic is anymore, which I don't think is very helpful. So for example, it is good that if we set it to zero and we save that now all of a sudden it's no longer for sale because that's the rule we have in place. But now if we have another user come in that's unaware of that rule and they're like, oh, there's an issue, it's not for sale, I don't really know why, and I'm trying to save it and it just keeps going back to not for sale, but I keep trying to save it, what's the issue there? And they're completely unaware of why that is. That lost information, while it is in code, it's not necessarily now information that's available to your end users. Now you can take CRUD pretty far and you can overcome some of the issues that I'm explaining in terms of having that logic in multiple places and trying to centralize it, as well as even displaying better error message to the users why they can't do certain things. It's all overcomable. But again, in my experience, this becomes a death by a thousand paper cuts because it becomes more and more that you're constantly adding to a single spot and becomes a lot harder to manage. The alternative to this is instead of making CRUD where really what you're doing is you're implying or your, your users are implying what they're trying to do. They're not explicit about what they're doing because you're giving the option to change everything. Rather, what you can do is focus the narrow on the things that they're actually trying to do that are business concepts or business capabilities that they're actually trying to do. When the user is trying to change the quantity on hand, no user, just end user is just changing the quantity on hand. There's a reason why they're doing it. And what is that reason? That can be defined by a set of capabilities. For example, in a warehouse, there are things like when you're shipping product or receiving product, that's gonna change the quantity on hand. If you do stock counts, there's inventory adjustments because maybe you decide, maybe you see that, oh, it, the system says we have 20, but really on the shelf, which is really point of truth, it says we have 18. So it's not you're just you're changing it to 18, rather you're doing an inventory adjustment that is explicit about why you're change, making that change. So you're getting out from CRUD, just letting the user do whatever they want, and you having to figure out potentially what they're trying to do. Rather, you force them down the road of explicitly telling you what they're trying to do. So to illustrate this, now what I've changed is the UI to be more explicit about the things that we're providing in our back end. So I can no longer just change the quantity, rather I have to do an inventory adjustment. And let's say that we found uh, 10 more, so I'm gonna add 10, which is gonna change our quantity on hand now to 30. In the same type of way, we still have that logic related to that if our quantity is zero, that we're gonna change the status to uh, unavailable for, for sale. So I'm gonna remove 30, which will change our quantity on hand to zero, and now our product is unavailable. So what that looks like in code is for every different capability or action, I actually have a file for it that performs that action. So here I'm in the available for sale and we're doing something similar still where we're fetching out the actual product and returning not found if it doesn't exist. But now we have a couple different methods that are on the entity. So we're not doing the state changes here exactly, we're doing them within the entity. So I have a can set available um, that just returns a bool and if it's not, then we're returning a bad request. But to change the actual status to available, I actually have the behavior within the entity class itself. So you can see that it has a bunch of the methods for behaviors for changing state. And most of the properties here, like price, cost, quantity on hand, et cetera, they're all private set. 
meaning that this class is in the methods within its class are the only places that we can actually change these given properties. So I have name description here that aren't private set. I'll show those off in a minute. But again, we're making all our state changes within the entity. So all our logic in terms of business rules and changing state actually live within the entity. So if we jump back to the UI and we have our status is unavailable, if we go and try to set it as available, we can now see that we get a validation message saying that the product must be unavailable and the quantity greater than zero. So at least we now we can provide that information about that explicit action that a user is trying to do. And if they can do it, great. If not, here's the actual reason why they can't. Now I mentioned that the name and the description were still just had public getters and I left that all alone. And my intent here is to describe that some portions of this may just be purely crud. Maybe you don't necessarily care that they're why they're changing the name or the description. Maybe you don't really want to derive anything from that. So I left that the name and the description are just simple crud, again, just on those particular properties for that entity. But all the rest of the operations, the tasks, are very explicit about what you're trying to do. Are you trying to increase the price, decrease the price, set as unavailable? Are you trying to increase the cost or market as backordered? Are you trying to do an inventory adjustment? These, again, these are making all very explicit uh, concepts about what the user is actually trying to do. CRUD isn't inherently bad. It has its place in simple places where you don't necessarily care what the user is actually trying to do and you don't really need to guide them. You're just letting them do what they need to do. But when you have inherent complexity, you want to capture that complexity in things like entities and have all that logic reside related to the entity or the aggregate. I've done a bunch of videos about aggregate, aggregate roots, how you can be driven by invariance. And one of the key things is once you start thinking about providing explicit concepts of what the user is trying to do, you don't have to imply what they're trying to do because you have it exactly. You can start doing other things. It kind of becomes a gateway, especially around event-driven architecture. Now you know what a user is, what they performed, and you can publish events about specifically about what occurred. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.